How is it going everyone? Welcome to the channel. Luck of the Irish is an achievement in EU4 you can get by having course on all provinces in the British region starting as an Irish nation. It's considered a hard achievement as per the EU4 wiki. There are 12 Irish miners you can play as at the start and Desmond is considered one of the strongest because they have a very good set of national ideas with army morale bonus and coring and province war cost reductions. They're certainly meant to be played with an expansion focus. However, for this achievement, I advise going for Munster instead. Munster national ideas are fairly average, but they start with something that no other Irish nation has at the start, a level 3 fort. It might not sound like a big deal, but to get this achievement optimally, you need to rush and get all of Ireland as soon as possible. The level 3 fort helps in a couple of ways. One, it deters the AI from attacking you. Two, if you attack an alliance of Irish miners and get into a base trade situation, you will always win the siege before they do. The only con is that it's costly and you will lose a lot of money from day one. Which is another reason you need to expand fast and build an economy base to take on England. Alliances are key to victory. At the start, get two Irish miners as allies who are not your neighbors. Who they are will depend on who rivals you. Rival of your rival is your friend. Keep one of your diplomats busy improving relations with France, Castile and Burgundy at all times. Just keep checking the diplomacy tab and Royal Mary and ally them whenever possible. You'll need two out of those three alliances to keep ahead of Scotland and England. Because if you fall behind, England will either attack you or warn you, really slowing down your progress. France, Castile and Burgundy usually rival one of each other, so you will lose an alliance sometime. You might also need to fight up Denmark for the island of Orkney, so later you can look to ally Denmark's rivals too. Also, answer the war calls by your allies. You don't have to participate at all and it might give you a few ducats and favors. I keep one diplomat on automatic duty to improve relations with my allies at all times. Conquering Ireland has to be done fairly quickly, and it's not that hard. As I mentioned earlier, you just need to seize down your opponents before them, and that will always happen because you have a level 3 fort. Couple of things to keep in mind though, you should put your monarch point focus on military at the start, as you don't want to lag behind on military tech. Always build up to your force limit before going to war. The first couple of wars might need you to take a lot of loans, but if you keep fighting wars and full annexing with all their money, you should be okay. You can also consider deleting all your navy at the start, as light ships and transports are not going to help you much. Also, you should never have rebels spawning in Ireland or Scotland. They eat up your money and your manpower. The provinces are of your religion and culture group, so the unrest won't be high. If the unrest is getting high anyways, consider raising the autonomy in that province. If an Irish miner is allied to England, wait till England are busy with another war. You can't take them on in the first few years. If someone is allied to Scotland, you should be able to take them. Just make sure you finish off the Irish army first and take on the Scottish army when they are either landing or crossing the strait. With Scotland, you have to be opportunistic. They are guaranteed by France and you don't want to fight France at all. Wait till France is busy with another war in Europe and won't honor the call. France is usually engaged in multiple wars in the first few years anyways. Or you can wait till both your European allies are willing to help in the war, but that's less than ideal. You want to save those favors to fight England and his allies. Which brings us to the final boss fight. The first war is not that hard as you are taking Pale, which you can siege down and get the war score ticking. Keep your army on the move and keep an eye on the English transports. Make sure you intercept their army before they land or cross the strait. Ideally, you would attack England for Pale before going for Scotland, so they don't have anything of yours to siege down. You should definitely call on your ally for this war to take care of England's European allies. Once you have taken over Scotland and have a foothold in the British mainland, the fight becomes easy. You will have to fight multiple wars to take all the provinces. Take 100% war score provinces and recover your manpower and pay off loans during truce times. You should call just one ally at a time for fighting England, so you have enough favors with your other ally to call them as soon as the truce expires. Alternating between allies will keep England from building up their forces, making your wars easier. But don't give your allies any British provinces in return. That will complicate things. I usually keep couple of heavies which I use to block the strait when needed. You don't really have to engage in naval battle at all. You can wait and build up your navy, but that's going to cost a lot of ducats and a lot of time. You have to get the island of Orkney from Denmark as well. Again, just wait till they are busy with the war and quick siege down your war goal. You don't need a lot of war score to get that province. And if you're in a strong position, you can also grab Iceland from them, which will help you in colonization should you wish to continue your game after the achievement. For ideas, I like starting with quality. 
England has 10% infantry compatibility as their starting national idea and I like to be at least on par with that. It also gives you an edge on the naval battle should you need to go against small naval stack with your two heavies. After that, you can go exploration and expansion in case you want to play the colonization game. You will also have to develop institutions to keep on par with the tech level, so you will be running short on monarch points. Just make sure you don't lag behind on military tech. You can also form Ireland if you want. It gives you army morale bonus which can be helpful, but it's not a requirement for this achievement. And that's the end of this short guide. Feel free to ask any questions if you have in comments and I'll be happy to answer them for you. I think this achievement is moderate difficulty at best, as long as you rush and capture all of Ireland quickly. There is another strategy that you can read about, which involves no sea being East Frisia and you becoming a part of HRE. I think that strategy complicates things when it can be done in an easier way. Munster is really my choice to get this achievement. I was able to do it by 1575 and coming up is a time lapse which shows my alliances, rivals and conquests. As always, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.